So let us now discuss about the different uh, types of modulation. In the earlier classes, uh, we have already seen that uh, the modulation is uh, divided into a continuous modulation, continuous wave modulation, and pulse modulation. This continuous wave modulation is further divided into amplitude modulation and angle modulation. Uh, then this pulse modulation is divided into digital modulation and analog modulation. And this angle modulation is further divided into frequency and phase modulation. Uh, the digital modulation is again divided into pulse core and then to delta modulation. Analog modulation is divided into uh, pulse amplitude modulation, pulse width modulation, and pulse position modulation. So this is how we see the classification. Uh, the only difference between the continuous wave carrier modulation and pulse modulation is that in a carrier signal, uh, the, in the case of AM and FM, the carrier signal is a sine wave. In case of pulse modulation, it is a carrier signal is a pulse string. So they are referred to as continuous wave modulation techniques and pulse modulation is uh, considered and is divided further into pulse analog and pulse digital techniques. And pulse analog is further divided into pulse amplitude, pulse width, and pulse position. The pulse digital is divided into pulse core, delta modulation, differential pulse core modulation. What are the characteristics? Uh, in a pulse train, pulses occur at discrete instances of time, uh, but the para both the parameters of the pulse amplitude, width, and position are continuous in nature. The amplitude is made proportional to the message, then it becomes pulse amplitude modulation. If the width is uh, made proportional to the message, okay, uh, then, uh, then it is pulse width modulation. And if position is made proportional to the message, it is it is a pulse position modulation. So this is how we will be discussing about the different uh, types that you have. Amplitude of the pulse can be represented by a discrete amplitude value. It leads to pulse code and modulation. And this PCM is further divided into delta modulation and a differential PCM, that is delta differential pulse code modulation. So in case of pulse analog modulation, time is discrete, pulse parameters are analog, that is amplitude, frequency, and phase. In the pulse digital modulation, time is discrete, pulse also is discrete. So this is the classification that we will be talking about in the pulse modulation. Uh, then there are a few differences uh, between continuous wave modulation and uh, uh, the pulse modulation. In this, sine wave is used as a carrier, and this pulse strain is used as a carrier. Sine wave is characterized in terms of parameters amplitude, frequency, and phase. Pulse strain is characterized in terms of parameters amplitude, width, and position. A continuous wave is obtained by varying one of the parameters of the sine wave with the instantaneous uh, variations of the message. Here it is obtained by varying one of the parameters of the pulse strain with the instantaneous variations of the message. Further, they are classified into pulse analog and pulse digital, depending on whether the parameters of the pulse is continuous or discrete in nature. Uh, then the continuous wave translates message from the baseband to boss band. That means you are raising the frequency, whereas here it translates the message from analog form to discrete form only, but uh, the signal is still in the baseband region. The message is transmitted over a longer distance in the case of uh, continuous wave modulation, but here it's only the, the important uh, aspect is that it is only converted from analog to discrete, but uh, the frequency translation doesn't happen, the energy content also is less. And frequency transmission takes place, the translation takes place, it doesn't happen. Uh, this is one of the disadvantages, but has its own applications. Now let us see the mathematical analysis 
of this pulse amplitude modulation. So the pulse amplitude modulation, we've seen that pulse coded modulation is divided into pulse amplitude, pulse width and pulse position. So in a pulse amplitude modulation, amplitude of the pulse is proportional to the instantaneous variations of the message signal. And if you represent the message signal by this Vm sine omega mt, usually the notation is small or lowercase represents the instantaneous values and the capital or the maximum capital letters indicate the maximum value. The pulse strain is a periodic signal. So what it means is if fx t is a periodic signal with time t zero, then x of t is equal to x of t plus t naught. Therefore, the information present in each period of the pulse strain is given by p is equal to vp for all values of t which is between zero and delta, where delta is the width of the pulse and it is zero for values uh, which is more than that width and it is less than or equal to time period. So this is the pulse width. The leading of the, the pulse contains with the starting of the internal in each period. Let us see what it means. The pulse amplitude modulated wave is given by the P into Vm. So it's Vp, Vm sine omega t for all values between zero and delta and between delta and t naught it is zero. So now what it happens is if this is your modulating signal and this is your pulse, so the amplitude modulation will be, when it, the signal is high, it will be sampled in this direction. When the signal is uh, low, it is going in the reverse direction. This is a message, pulse strain, and this is pulse amplitude modulation. So the amplitude follows the message signal and hence the name. The contour is the outer envelope. The spectral amplitude will be in the low frequency range and type is off as we move towards the high frequency range. The message signal is a low frequency signal. Multiplication of the two for generating PM signal, it results in the convolution of the spectra, okay? And it still retains the message in the low frequency range even after modulation. That is the difference between amplitude modulation of sine wave and pulse strain. Therefore, PAM is not useful like AM, but it is found usefulness in understanding the sampling process, which is very important. Uh, what is sampling? So suppose you are cooking a dish, uh, you do not, uh, weigh, and you do not, when you want to taste, you will not taste the entire dish. You will take a few grains and then taste it. So how many, while, uh, while you are cooking, let us say a particular dish takes uh, 10 to 15 minutes. Now, how often do you check? Do you check every two, two minutes or every three, three minutes, whatever uh, be the maximum time it takes and how many intervals you are taking is what is known as sampling. Okay, the process is performed using PAM. So the sampling process is treated as an electronic switching action. You have a control signal and an analog signal. This is a switch. So what happens uh, when this is being sampled if it is not sampled, signal is processed. So the pulse strain is applied as a control signal. When the pulse occurs, switch is on condition. It acts as a short circuit between input and output terminals. The output value will therefore be equal to the input. During the other intervals of the pulse strain, the switch is in off condition. That is, it acts as an open circuit. The output is therefore undefined. So the output uh, of the switch will be essentially a PIM signal. And since it is a transistor or a diode can be used as a switch. It's like while it is being cooked, okay, uh, you are checking. When you are sampling it, you are stopping and then sample it. And if you feel that it is not cooked enough, you allow the fire or the electric cooker, the supply should continue. So switch means switch off, check it. If it is not cooked, then switch on, continue cooking, something like this. So there are other aspects that need to be considered. The first and foremost is how often are you doing? This is known as the rate at which you are doing. This is known as a sampling theorem, a famous sampling theorem, which states that the sampling frequency, that is the number of samples taken per second, should be greater than or equal to twice the maximum frequency. 
So the minimum parsable value is termed as an IQ strain, the rate at which uh, it will decide the periodicity associated with the pulse strain. The second important aspect is the width of the pulse. Uh, when you are uh, checking, how long are you taking to check? How many times and how long? These are the two aspects. So one example is given. You can just go through this example. Maximum frequency is this. The time rate of frequency is like this. Next comes pulse uh, width modulation. This is defined as a process in which delta, the width of the pulse in the unmodulated pulse strain is proportional to the signal. And delta m therefore will be given by delta into 1 plus vm. When there is no message, vm is 0. Then the width of the pulse is equal to delta. For positive values of the message, the width will be proportional to 1 plus vm and it increases. And for negative values, the message is proportional to 1 minus vm and the width decreases. So this is what is happening here. So this is the pulse. Then when it is positive, the width is increasing. When it is negative, the width is decreasing. So the amplitude of the pulse remains constant. In either case, amplitude remains constant and it is only the width which is changing. So it is more robust to noise compared to PAM and it is made only using trailing edges uh, or it can also use it for the leading edges. It is the same. Next comes pulse position modulation. It is defined as a process of varying the position of the pulse. Uh, with respect to instantaneous values of the uh, message signal. So if TP indicates timing constant of the leading or trailing edge of the pulse in each period of the pulse strain, then uh, PPM uh, therefore is proportional to VM. So mathematically, the position of the trailing edge or leading edge is given by this, which is a function of VM. So when there is no message, TP is zero. When it is positive, the position will be positive uh, or the edge of the pulse is equal to the original pulse. For positive values of the message, it is proportional to Vm and it is to the right. For negative values, the position will be shifted by this much minus f of Vm and it is to the left. Just to see, this is the pulse strain, this is the message. So when it is positive and when this is negative, what's happening? See, when it is positive, it's moved to the right. When it is negative, it's moved to the left. Once the position is extracted, the leading or uh, trailing edge of the pulse is placed at that instant. So the PPL is equally robust to uh, noise. Then uh, the pulse digital modulation techniques, uh, they are actually used for moving analog to digital signal from digital to the original analog phone. The salient features are they can be treated an extension of FM. And if time is discretized, the amplitude is constant. Some values of the amplitude can be eliminated. For example, uh, in this process of discretization, what happens if it is a music? So suppose uh, in a concert, uh, famous musicians, if they are singing, they'll be singing at different high pitch, low pitch, medium pitch, and so on. Their voice, or a music, speech or a music contains infinite number of frequency components. So all frequency components need not be telecast or broadcast. So some frequencies can be grouped. So high frequencies all can be grouped to one uh, level and all the low frequencies can be grouped to one low level. So thereby actually you are sampling it and this process is called quantization. The signal with the discretized values of the amplitude is termed as quantized uh, signal. Uh, so in this process, what happens there will be a possibility of error and this difference is termed as quantization noise and preferably minimum quantization noise is required, hence more closely quantization signals are needed. So therefore, it means more number of discrete levels. The quantization can be carried out either by dividing the whole amplitude into uniform or non-uniform intervals. So accordingly, you have uh, non-uniform quantization or uniform quantization. Each of them is represented uh, as powers of two. So if you have a word bit of length eight bits, you can have 256 discrete levels. So that's each analog value is sampled by PIM process, quantized, and is represented by a binary word. Hence the name pulse code modulation, where the pulse modulation involves coding the amplified uh, signals. 
Then comes PCM techniques. Essentially, it is a process uh, of PAM. Only thing is, it is in terms of pulse width. We have a sampler block which continues both in time and amplitude. This is discrete in time, and the output of the quantizer will be uh, will have signals which is discrete. The whole process of sampling, quantizing, and including encoding is termed as digital to analog to digital conversion process. Therefore, the output will be ADC. Then you have a delta modulation, which is obtained by simplifying the quantization and encoding process. Uh, and then the rate at which you do is uh, the request rate, the sampling rate. Uh, and then uh, this is done in successive samples. Uh, two successive samples differ in uh, amplitude by an amount of delta. So the current sample is either larger or smaller than the previous value. So it is quantized as delta plus or delta minus. Uh, you can have plus one and plus two. Represented, and then you have a delta modulator here, sampler two level, one bit encoder, and then the quantizer needs to discretize this, and hence the accumulator is needed here, which divides this into plus delta and minus delta. A slight variation of the same is available in the form of differential pulse code modulation. It estimates the predictable form from the signal and then codes the unpredictable or error signal. Predictable is music or a speech unpredictable is uh, the error. So it is possible to classify the information present in them into predictable and unpredictable part. Uh, and then avoid the variance amongst the two. And the variance of the samples will be about half of that of the original signal and saving the bandwidth. So for example, if PCM requires 48 kbps, 64 kbps, half of it, that means 48 is required for PCM. Okay, similar to the same, this is the block diagram. The input is passed through the predictor block. The unpredictable part is passed to the sampler. And then both these are combined to get what is known as this 